Support WrestleTalk! Donate on Patreon. Brock Lesnar actually interested in a match? Triple H turns on everyone? And who needs new talent? I'm Ollie Davis and this is the one night a year when Raw and Smackdown compete in head-to-head -head competition, Survivor Series 2017, in about four minutes. The one night a year when Raw and Smackdown compete in head-to-head -head competition began with Raw wrestler Elias beating Raw wrestler Matt Hardy. Then Raw cruiserweight Enzo Amore beats Raw Raw Cruiserweight Kalisto and SmackDown Team Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn beat SmackDown Team Breeze Ango. All three matches were either unimportant or below average. The New Day and The Shield opened the proper Survivor Series show, which isn't only the one night a year when Raw and SmackDown compete head to head, and yes, I get the point, Michael Cole! It's also a night where all five WWE announcers do commentary at the same time. It's a testament to how good The Shield vs New Day match was that they were able to overcome the ear cacophony on commentary. While the match was very good, the team's respective Usos and bar encounters from the last few months were much better. Stephanie McMahon addressed the Raw women's team like they were a school sports team before their match because, just in case you forgot, WWE is about the McMahons, not the actual wrestlers. The match was a mixed bag, beginning with frustratingly early eliminations for Becky Lynch and Bayley and Alicia Fox botching her fourth finish to a WWE. WWE match this year. It's almost like her new gimmick, the unpinnable Alicia F***, but only because she keeps forgetting how matches are supposed to end. But the Nia Jax and Tamina confrontation was well executed, as was Asuka getting three eliminations and standing tall at the end. Baron Corbin and The Miz actually had a pretty decent match, but that might only be because expectations were so low. Corbin overcame The Miz to Raj to win, hitting an end of days. from out of gimmick infringement. The Usos and The Bar had the night's second best match, with great near falls and an insane flying tag dive combo to the outside. If this had an actual feud heading into it, giving both teams more story elements to work with, this would have been incredible. While I'm all for giving matches a lot of time, with the average main card duration being 18 minutes long, Charlotte versus Alexa Bliss could have been cut down by a third. Bliss tapped to Charlotte's figure eight. Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles, however, was exactly exactly right. The first third was AJ having an in-depth tour of Suplex City, with Brock picking him apart, like all Lesnar's other recent matches. But here, there was a difference. Brock actually cared, giving AJ a terrific comeback. Phenomenal forearm to the outside, 450 splash, and in the spot of the night, Lesnar screaming in AJ's calf crusher, and then smashing Styles' head on the mat like an angry gorilla. And after multiple finisher attempts from AJ, it only took one F5 for Brock to win, making it all the more impressive when Roman Reigns eventually kicks out of it at WrestleMania. Lesnar brilliantly continued to sell his leg after the match, a bit of doubt in his eye that maybe on another day AJ could have beaten him. This was a sublime encounter, and just like the battle bout at TLC, I want to see a rematch. Which makes it neck and neck going into the main event, both Raw and SmackDown having three wins apiece. The men's five on five elimination was a match of two halves, and then an extra bit at the end. The first half was dream match tease after dream match tease. Finn Balor vs Shinsuke Nakamura with a too sweet head poke, Kurt Angle vs Bobby Roode, Kurt Angle vs Nakamura, Triple H vs Nakamura, Triple H vs Triple H, I mean Bobby Roode, Triple H vs Kurt Angle, wait wait a second, Triple H vs Shane McMahon, no, no stop it, Triple H vs Braun Strowman, Triple H go home, you're drunk on power. All the early dream match promise was scrapped in favour of contrived and possibly damaging booking. Nakamura and Rude, your two newest call-ups, were the first to be eliminated. Samoa Joe and Finn Balor followed in the next five minutes, and John Cena was taken out by Angle after a cool bit of nostalgia, but ultimately a complete waste of a Cena appearance. Thanks for stopping by, John! We'll see you at WrestleMania season. With Strowman put through a table, this made the last third of the match all about Triple H, Randy Orton, Kurt Angle, and Shane McMahon. Hardly exciting up-and-comers. There was a brief moment of hope when KO and Sammy tried to take McMahon out, but 47-year-old untrained wrestler Shane fought them off 
with a chair, making SmackDown's most intriguing heel faction look completely worthless. Once Braun eliminated Brandy, the average age of the match became 44 and a quarter years old, with the least qualified person in the ring being Team SmackDown's sole survivor. And somehow not tapping to a prolonged ankle lock. Then Triple H turned on everyone. First he turned on Kurt, breaking up the ankle lock and giving Shane the pin. And then he turned on McMahon, pedigreeing Shane to win the match. Meaning neither Raw or SmackDown won Survivor Series, Triple H did. It was overdone narcissistic booking that took the crowd out of the action. But there is one positive. Triple H then put over Braun Strowman very strongly. After awesomely screaming, you will never play this game again, Babyface Braun hit Triple H with two running power slams to close the show. So that was Survivor Series 2017 in about four minutes. Here's Raw's ratings recap from top to bottom. In all, core, average, poor, and bore. I'll reveal my rating very shortly, but first, vote in the poll above my head to give yours. I'll announce the results in tomorrow's Wrestle Talk news. The show was way too long to be enjoyable all the way through. Watch NXT the previous night for how a wrestling show should feel. The commentary became an unintelligible din, and the main event showcased some of the worst elements of WWE booking. But this was a very fun show. AJ versus Brock was fantastic, the majority of matches delivered, and Brock was left standing at the end. Survivor Series 2017 is core. Have WWE failed to create new stars? And what's the real reason Hulk Hogan sued WCW over a storyline? Click the videos to the left to find out. Press subscribe and support Wrestle Talk. Order issue one of the Wrestle Talk magazine now. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was wrestling.